This episode was made possible by Ecosia. Help make the world a greener place by using the Ecosia search engine to help plant trees all over the globe. A few years ago, I worked in retail selling cameras. One of the first conversations I had with a coworker was, what if any given number didn't exist? How would that change things? Would it ruin mathematics in various fields of science? The consensus was it would really only matter if that number were suddenly banned after already existing in calculations and measurements. It wouldn't really change anything if it never existed, because it wouldn't be missing from the sequence. Numbers would just proceed without it. But there's another number that actually didn't exist for the longest time, and when it showed up, it changed everything. The number zero has been a critical part of mathematics for hundreds of years, but it didn't start out that way. When the idea of an absence of value became the number zero, it sparked enormous changes in the mathematics of the time, and it's regarded as one of the most significant breakthroughs in history. Think about how we use zero in modern applications. We have what's called a positional number system, which means the location of a digit is very important. The only real visual difference between 10 and 1 million is the position of the number one. If you add zeros after a number, it makes that number larger by orders of magnitude. If you add zeros before the number, it makes it smaller by the same degree. The idea of zero as a placeholder allows for much greater precision than was previously possible. As bizarre as it seems to us, the people of the past went thousands of years without the number zero. Around 7,000 years ago, the Sumerians used a system that incorporated a placeholder symbol or a blank space which indicated the lack of a value. So 501 would be written 5 blank 1, or 5 symbol 1. The interesting part about this system was, the symbol was never used at the end of the number, so the only way to differentiate between 5 and 500 was context. The lack of a dedicated number for zero complicated mathematics tremendously, and made even simple computations incredibly tedious. Today, it seems like common sense to include a number for nothing, or for making numbers larger or smaller, so why did it take so long for the idea of zero to catch on? Strangely enough, it wasn't a lack of creativity that prevented the implementation of the number zero. It was the stigma associated with the idea of nothingness. The ancient Greek thinker Parmenides was of the opinion that nothing cannot exist, since to speak of something is to speak of something that exists. Europeans held negative views about nothingness because to the religious leaders of the time, everything that existed was because of God, and anything that did not exist must be without God, and therefore the work of the devil. To protect the people from the evil works of zero, its use was promptly banned, but merchants kept using it in secret because it made tracking their business much easier. These negative views on nothingness weren't always present in other regions. In some Eastern societies, such as in Buddhist groups, the idea of nothingness or emptiness is actually a good thing, and a critical step on the road to nirvana. The first known use of the number zero dates back to India in the 3rd or 4th century, written as part of what's known as the Bakshali Manuscript. Its usage slowly spread to other parts of the world, and more quickly to China and the Middle East, but it took a full thousand years for the concept of zero to take hold in Europe. Fibonacci, the Italian merchant who played a critical role in bringing the decimal system to Europe, said, The method of the Indians surpasses any known method to compute. It's a marvelous method. They do their computations using nine figures and the symbol zero. When zero took its rightful place among the other numbers, it opened multitudes of new possibilities. It drastically simplified calculations, allowed for the solving of more complex equations, it led to the work of the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta, which is often considered the beginning of modern algebra, then to the work of 9th century Persian mathematician Al-Khwarizmi, which eventually made the abacus obsolete, and from whom we derive the term algorithm. As we saw earlier in the video, adding zeros provides greatly improved precision, which allowed later thinkers like Isaac Newton to develop calculus, the study of continuous change. These three pillars of modern mathematics, algebra, algorithms, and calculus, all owe their existence to the invention of a symbol to represent nothing. Over the years, zero would become even more useful, forming the basis for electronics and computers, allowing for the notion of infinity in theoretical mathematics, the idea of a vacuum in quantum physics, and innumerable other applications that we take for granted today. So the next time you're having a bad day and think nothing matters, you're absolutely right. The idea of zero allows us to think bigger, numbers like 30 million, that's three followed by seven zeros, and that's the number of trees Ecosia users have planted just by browsing the web. Ecosia is a search engine that uses its profits to plant trees. Just like Google or Bing, they make money from search ads, but the cool thing is they're a non-profit, completely transparent with their spending, and use their income to fund reforestation projects around the world. This is such an amazing and important project because they're not selling a product, they're just trying to make the world a greener and better place for future generations, and we can help. They've made a legally binding commitment to ensure that no profits can ever be taken out of the company, they release a financial report every single month to show where the money is going, and they respect your search privacy. 
To top things off, Ecosia servers run on 100% renewable energy, and they even operate their own solar plant to power your searches. Thanks to the trees Ecosia has planted, every search removes a kg of CO2 from the atmosphere. Guys, this project is amazing. I use Ecosia, it's completely free, and you can make a real difference for everyone. If you think that's as valuable as I do, start using the Ecosia search engine by following the link below.